Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to the Book Refuge and welcome to a book haul. Um, this is a smaller than normal but still significant book haul that I wanted to share and as I usually do, I really want to get these beautiful books put on my shelves and I don't put them away until I share them with you. So let's go ahead and dive into those. Um, I have received some wonderful gifts and also splurged on myself a little bit, you know? We, we, we do that sometimes, and uh, I'm pretty excited about the things I've splurged on and what I've, what I've bought for myself. So first off, let me just share some gifts that came from you guys. Um, I'm just always so blessed. You guys are amazing. So um, I received this from Karen B. She sent me from my wish list, The Earl on the Train by Carrie and Byrne. Um, this one says that it's like a, like, 7.5 in the Victorian Rebel series, which is awesome. I've never read this one yet, which is why it was on my list. Um, I think this like was in an anthology to start with. So this is so great. I have all the Kerrigan Burn books, you know, except I didn't have this one. So thank you so much, Karen. That is so nice. Um, I can't wait to be in a historical mood and dive into this one. Then from my wonderful a uh, friend, Elena P., she sent me um, two of the books from the McCullough Mountain series, which you couldn't have known this, Karen. You couldn't have known this. I mean, you couldn't have known this, Elena. You couldn't have known this. But I was literally reading this book when you sent it to me. This was the last one I hadn't read yet. All the other books in the series I've read, I don't own them all yet but I was reading this book when you sent it to me. So I just love when that happens. Like it's been on my wish list for six months and you happened to buy it and send it my way right when I was finally reading the audiobook. So thank you so much. This series has just been so sweet. It's a small town um, family. Um, they have their ups and downs. Some of the books in the series aren't the best, but some of them are amazing. And these two were ones that I really, really enjoyed. So I'm so happy I can add these to my collection. So thank you so much, Elena. Um, this little beauty and, well, all four of these, I think, came from the same person, but we'll start with this one. So I definitely can't wait to read this one. I really love Lillian Lark. I've only read three of her books, but she comes up with some very interesting monster romance. So this one's part of the Bathhouse monster series or like set in the same place and so this one is from Cassie um, and she was wishing me good luck from my six month update video that she watched um, so Cassie sent me this this one is found by the lake monster um, and so I'm pretty sure this one has like breeding schmink going on in it and um, the the heroine Amy um, is like looking for the local lake monster um, and he ends up finding her and this could maybe be his last heat so it's like his last chance to um, be a father and so he sees if she could be the one to carry his eggs for him so I'm definitely excited to be in a monster manger to me that and then Cassie also sent me just the sweetest thing like these are big like well literally big but also they're like the really like wish for items on my list but they're also something I would never expect someone to send me but they're those things you put on your wish list and you're like you know what someone may want to bless me with this and if they do it's gonna be amazing um and it'll be very kind and Cassie not only did she send me that sexy little lake monster she sent me the first three books in the Wicked Villain series. The beautiful hardback with old school romance covers that are just such a dream of mine to own, but also I couldn't justify buying them for myself because I already have the original set. And so she sent me Desperate Measures, Jafar and Jasmine's, and like Katie Robert really did an amazing job. These were originally a Kickstarter and I just couldn't get myself to buy them. Um, there is Learn My Lesson and A Worthy Opponent. 
Now, someone else previously had sent me one of these as a gift. They sent me um, the Beast. So that was the only one that I previously had. And now I have one through four. So thank you so much, Cassie. Like, honestly, I was speechless when I opened that pack. So those were gifts from you guys. That is always so kind of you to send me something. Um, I know not everyone can be a Patreon. No one, not everyone can be a channel member. And whenever someone wants to do something nice for me and they send me a book and they say something like, I wish I could do more, I just want to, number one, hug you. And then number two, like, tap you kindly on the cheek. I would never want to slap someone, but be like, what better gift are you giving a book lover than to send them a book and a book that they want because it's on their wish list? Like, I'm always so honored. So please, please never think you're not doing a kindness. I mean, you're just so kind. Anyway, all right. Then we have a stack of books that I was sent for like promotion slash um, like arcs that are coming out. So I've been super lucky with these lately. This is something that like people don't understand. They think we get sent free stuff all the time. And I know I've just shown stuff that was sent to me. I understand. I understand I'm blessed. But there is still this randomness that's involved in receiving like traditionally published books for ARCs. You know, like I read a lot of e-ARCs. I'm perfectly happy with doing that. And a lot of times I'm fine with it being a e-ARC because if you don't love the book, then nobody like wasted a physical book on you. You know what I mean? I'm definitely practical that way. Like I, I don't mind getting an e-book as the ARC because then if I like it, I will support the author by buying a physical copy of the book. You know what I mean? Anyway, that's just my own philosophy. We are privileged to get ARCs, okay? But also... An arc is kind of a, like, it's, it's a gift you're getting, but it's also, you know, you're doing something for that author too. So that's something that I've had this discussion with a friend of mine lately that I think it's something that we can, like, either side can become entitled with and it can be kind of icky. Like, there's so much it going on between indie authors and entitled book talkers and then um, people overcorrecting like that just happens on both sides and it gets really icky and nobody likes that nobody likes that but it is something to remember that when you win an arc or you get given one an author is kind of using you for free promo and it is a symbiotic relationship that a lot of us love to be a part of especially if we are a booktuber or bookstagram or whatever like we're okay with that relationship but if you ever get an arc and you don't love it or it doesn't go well for you you don't owe that person a good review. You don't owe that person, um, I mean, anything. Like, a lot of times when you're signing up for an ARC, you are agreeing to post a review or else say not. Like, you are. You are. But just remember, like, you're doing a favor for an author, too. They may be sending you this book, and you're like, oh, my God, I'm so honored. Which, I mean, again, you should be. Be humble. But remember... You don't owe anyone anything. Like, they know the risk they're taking by sending you the book. You know, they know there's going to be some percentage of people that don't actually read it or don't like it. That happens. You know, and don't be a jerk about it. Um, that's something that's a whole nother conversation. But I think we forget, like, I'm going to show you a couple books that were given to me. And your gut impulse is to be like, I'm so lucky. I'm so honored. But remember you are also doing something for the author. It's not like it's just a, they're doing you such an honor giving you your book. Again, you see how it's both like, it is sometimes an honor to receive a book. We are lucky to be able to get books ahead of the general public and then be able to share them. But also you don't like owe them your soul for doing that. You know, like you, you still have to be you, right? And that's what I've, I've built my channel on and it doesn't matter who is giving me books, I'm going to give you my honest opinion. Again, I try not to be an asshole about that. But anyway, I know that went into a thing. But again, like I had this conversation with a friend recently. And I think it's a good reminder, especially like we've become overwhelmed with ARCs before. People send me ARCs that I don't ask for. Or people say they want to give you a book. Will you talk about it? And then you have people that will just like bug, 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 bug you to talk about the book. And you're like, this doesn't fit in with my channel. Or I didn't like the book please stop. And that can be overwhelming, especially if you're a small creator and this is the first arc you ever got and you don't know how to handle it. Well, you don't owe that person anything, but being kind, you know, 
that's what I say. Like, you're not, oh, like, they're not owed anything. You're not owed anything. You're not entitled to an arc, but whatever. Like, I've shared this frustration before where, like, I wasn't getting arcs from Avon. I just was, Harper Voyager was not sending me arcs from them. And I was so heartbroken because I had a bigger following than some people who get their arcs. And again, I know that sounds entitled, but it's just a thing. You're like, why am I not getting these when I talk about Avon books all the time, right? And now something's changed and I'm getting arcs from them and I don't really read as many of their books. So it's weird how life goes. Anyway, long enough thing. These are the books I've been sent for promo and I'm gonna share them with you. <laughs> um, and all of them have come out or will come out this month. So um, some Dukes Have All the Luck by Christina Britton. I really want to get to this one. I do. I wanted to read this one during the historical romance readathon. Didn't happen. See my bookmarks even in it. I'm ready to go. Um, and I've been seeing a lot of my friends give this very high reviews. So I'm excited. But this one is about Ash Hawkins, the Duke of Buckley, who no more wants to marry than he wants to stick a stick in his eye. And as the owner of a gaming hell, he is all too aware of the odds of a happy, happy marriage are against him. But raising his three rebellious wards alone is proving more than he can handle. He needs to find someone who stands to benefit from a marriage of convenience as much as he does. Someone logical, clinical, and rational. And in a stroke of luck, he quite literally stumbles over just such a woman. After years of ridicule for being more interested in bugs than boys, Bronwyn Ooh, I like this name. I'm into it. Has accepted that she'll never marry for love. Her parents, however, are threatening to find her a husband. Bronwyn doesn't need any scientific research to know her ash has secrets, but his proposal would give her the freedom to continue her entomology research and perhaps finally get published, just as long as she can keep her mind on her work and off his piercing broad shoulders and wicked, wicked tongue. Oh boy. So this one's a fake dating maybe? I think so. And a scientific woman. So there we go. There's that one. This is exciting to me. And then this is one that I won. So um, this was very exciting to me. Um, uh, Eloisa James was doing a giveaway on her TikTok of some arcs of um, the Reluctant Countess, which comes at the end of the month. And she sent me an autograph copy as an arc that says happy reading which is so sweet and so this one comes out November 29th and it says um, so this is the would-be wallflower series this is book two Giles Renwick Earl of Lilliford has never made a fool of himself over a woman until he meets Lady Yasmin Regnier. Yasmin is ineligible for his attentions in every way, not as a wife, certainly not as a mistress, nor even as a friend, since they vehemently dislike each other. Her gowns are too low and she loves to gossip rather than dignified. She's scandalous. So what in heaven's name possesses him to propose and what will he do if she says yes? So very lovely, very excited to continue this series. Eloisa James is a forever favorite and currently one of the only like long-term authors I love that's publishing right now because like haven't heard a peep out of Lisa Clayfez, haven't heard a peep out of uh, any new like Julia Quinn which I mean I understand why but still. Um, so yeah I mean Elizabeth Hoyt and Lorraine Heath obviously they're they're still coming to I'm excited for those but I'm just saying she's someone I've loved since I was young and is the only one that I've seen like new stuff from lately and then if you saw my TikTok or my Instagram post about this you will know that I cried real tears that I was blessed enough to get a copy of this so this is one I'm talking about like I cannot believe that I received this because I remember saying that I liked this book because there was a form for me to fill out. I am a influencer for Read Forever or Forever Pub with Hachette. And I, like, I just didn't believe that I would get this book, right? So when I opened this book and I have an early copy of Before I Let Go, which has gold foiling, I drop first I dropped it back down to the table and then I cried and then I filmed that video <laughs> this is for sure one of my top favorites of the year definitely without a doubt it is I recently read a book that may challenge it which I will be hauling shortly too but there's no doubt this is in the top books I've read this year there's also no doubt it's Kennedy Ryan is fantastic this one comes out on November 15th so it's only a week away before this one is coming out. This is a second chance romance. Um, this is a 
couple who has gotten divorced. They had the loss of a child and they just were grieving in very different ways and they didn't end up staying together. And so this is a like couple years after the divorce and they're co-parenting, things are mostly going well. Um, and they're both trying to get back into dating and they just keep being drawn to each other. Um, and so, oh, I'm not working myself up into it. I'm not doing it. You can go here if you want to see my review of when I read this book. I was able to get an arc of this. Um, and it just, it just broke me a little bit, you guys. I love it so much. I'm scared to reread this when I reread it at the end of the year. But I'm really looking forward to the audiobook. Um, I think Jacoby is supposed to be back for this. He's in most of her books. But I love this couple so much. Um, Yasmin and Josiah. Um, so thank you so much, Hachette, forever. Um, the woman who sent me this one is Estelle with their um, PR. <sighs> I'm just, thank you, like seriously, because I was 100% gonna buy this the second it was in the store. So to open the package and have this book, thank you. Um, anyway, moving on. Like I said, sometimes it's the absolute honor and sometimes they're books you've never heard of before, right? So then of course, um, I am on um, Sophie's influencer list and she had some new illustrated books coming out. And so this is a relationship that I have been so blessed by. And it is one that I'm a ride or die for this author, y'all. And I'm a simp. I don't care. They take good care of the people who love their books. And they're also some of the most humble, kind people you'll ever meet. That is no joke. I would not lie to you, okay? I would not shit with you, okay? But Sophie is amazing. So the illustrated editions of There Are No Saints and There Is No Devil came out. Um, and so she sent me a beautiful signed copy of this one. Um, and her little note in it just said it was nice to see me in San Antonio. And then they also sent with a bloody bookmark and a cute little sticker of Ada eating a strawberry, which is so cute. Um, one of Lena's designs as well. So these are the illustrated editions. If you didn't know, like I also have the two for the first two books. The books three and four were just released as well. So um, I should be getting those soon too from her. Um, but we have the beautiful um, chapter design. And then let me find a good picture for you. Ooh. Oh yeah. Here's a nice one right there. So Lena, um, a friend of the channel she designed these so there we go so happy to have these for my Sophie collection which has taken over the shelf behind me there all right so those are the ones that I've been sent now we'll go through a bit quicker because the next stack these are autographed books that I have ordered or were in a book box so they're ones that they weren't sent to me but I bought them so um, first off, I'm so excited to show this book. I pre-ordered this from her. Um, God, it's so gorgeous. So Jess Wisecup did these special edition hardcovers of Between Wrath and Mercy. I can't wait until I can have one of the second book as well. Um, and then she has an Etsy shop, which if I remember, I'll link it down below. I just made a gift guide video, which will be going up soon, that has her info in it too. But she also has some art prints and some stickers that go along with it. But let me show you the naked book, because this is why, like, I had to have it. I had to have it. The naked book looks like this and like this and like this. And I had to have it. And then she also signed it for me. So yeah, I ordered this from her Etsy shop and it's magnificent. And you should definitely check it out if you love her books. It's totally worth it. I also love how like compact this one is because one of the things with my beautiful paperback, because I do, I love my paperback. It is a bit um, like, it's a nice floppy one, but it does like expand quite a bit. And this is nice and compact and beautiful. So I ordered this for myself. God, it's so pretty. Then um, I'm in Sam Mariano's um, Facebook group. And she 
since she was ordering books for a book con, she opened up her book form. Um, and so I went ahead and ordered some of her books that I didn't have yet because I had a lot of her books on um, my wish list because the ones that I need the most, I like have them, but there was some that I didn't. And she was offering scratch and dent copies of um, The Boy on the Bridge, which I didn't have. And literally like, oftentimes like authors have books that are scratch and dent to them that they would never sell, but it's still like, there's hardly a thing wrong with it. So, right. So this scratch and dent, like literally it just has this little bump and like ridging on the top. And this book was like $10 off. Like this is an expensive book. This book is big. Um, and so she signed this for me and then there is a bookmark with it. Um, and so that was the book that I went into her book form to buy. Cause she said, I have limited copies, but I have scratch and dent copies of the boy on the bridge. If you want it, you can get it. And then when I was in her list, I was like, you know what? There are some of her books I don't have. So why don't I just buy them? <laughs> so I got two books that fit into her um, Morelli series. There is Entrapment, which is Accidental Witness from Mateo's point of view, plus um, some bonus scenes. So um, there's this signed one. And then there is her Valentine's Day treat, which has a kind of like um, bonus sex scene that is like made up. I know that's weird, but there's a threesome scene that she puts in here that does not, it doesn't actually exist because it involves a character who's in a relationship, but she wrote it as like a fun treat. And then this one has a bonus scene that's in the Stitches universe that I haven't read. So I ordered this, it was only like 10 bucks to get this one. And then I got, this is the special edition of Stitches. This is a menage romance. This is an MFM and it's one of the few MFMs I really love. And so this is an anniversary edition of the book and I just really love this cover. But I really love this one, how it's an MFM because the way it's an MFM is like a form of like care. <laughs> so there's this married couple and their friend um, he's recently gotten divorced from his wife and it was really ugly. And so he is staying with them and his friend wants to offer him comfort. So he offers him his wife and his wife is into it as well. So like, I know it's weird. It's Sam Mariano. She does shit like that. And I, I love that book. So happy to have it. And then I didn't have a copy of even if it hurts yet. Now I don't totally love even if it hurts, but since I could get a signed copy of it, I just went ahead and did it. And so those were the five that I got from her signed book. She also recently just released two different books. Um, and the next book in the Coastal Elite, which I haven't read, this one was in an anthology, um, is Undertow. So I did buy the this edition, but I'll probably get the one that matches even if it hurts later. But so I haven't read this one. And she did put out a note that you have to read this one before we can read the next one. So I'm going to read this one soon. So there's those. Then um, I ordered the book box as well as I was given this book as a as a gift from someone. Um, and I um, so I ordered the hardback of this, but I had the paperback given to me by a viewer. I forgot that. So I put their note inside this one and I'm doing a giveaway with the other one since that one isn't signed and personalized, but I was, it was so kind of this person to send it to me. I didn't even know that I was getting it as a gift until I already ordered the gift box. And when I went to take it off of my wish list, it had already been sent to me. So I forgot about that, but Elena actually sent me this as well. Um, so Elena, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And so I'm going to do a giveaway with the paperback one then that you sent me. Um, and I put your note inside this one because you thought of me and you sent it. But um, Tiffany Roberts, they redesigned the cover of His Darkest Cravings and they did a book box with it, which had some amazing stuff in it. Um, it had also these like, um, I can't show you these because they're NSFW but it had naughty pictures in it. Um, and then it had 
some stickers in it too, um, as well as a blanket and um, some other fun things. So they had this hardcover book box that you could order from them. Um, and I just love it. I love this cover. I love Cruz and Sophie. And so there we go. Then I ordered the um, Dark and Disturbed book box that was Christie's collection because it had two authors that I really love and one author that I want to read more of her books. And I'm very excited with what came in it. So um, it ended up having this edition of Does It Hurt, which we're also going to see show up in this book haul again because I didn't know this was going to be the book that was in it. I should have guessed that when H.G. Carlton was going to be in the book. So anyway, this one is this really pretty dark cover of Even If It Hurts. And then I put the book plate in it because I wanted to have it. I really love the designs inside of this one, like the water and everything. So this was a six star book of mine this year. So I'm happy to have that. Then um, there was also Tease by Melanie Harlow. There's a book plate in that one. And this is one, that's an author that I love as well. And then this is one that, you know, it might finally be time to read this book since it was in this book box. And it was Lola and the Millionaires, both books in one. So this is one a lot of people have wanted me to read for a reverse harem and a like that it has MM content in it. Um, and, you know, since I got the bind up of both and this is so beautiful, I might just have to get around to it. So there were those. Then we have my biannual book box that I do, which is Renegade Romance. I'm going to be so sad when my first year of this is done because I don't know if I'm going to do another year of it. I don't know. I like I want to, but I got to be careful with the, how many book boxes I sign up for, man. It's expensive. But um, in this one was the omnibus of Cambric Creek. So this has, it's volume one, but it has the first three books that have all been released already. So it has Morning Glory Milking Farm, um, Sweet Berries, and Moon Blooded Breeding Clinic are all in this bind up. So that's really cool. This one also was personally, like these were signed by her. So some of the art that came with it, there was fun stickers for everybody. There was this really cute postcard that has all the couples on it. Um, really sexy picture of the hero of one and then them together right there. So this was super cute. Um, I didn't love Morning Glory Milking Farm, but I do love the first, the second two books in the series. So this is a really cool bind up of them. I really like that. And I definitely like this cover more than Morning Glory Milking Farm. Although I do really love the covers of book two and three. Although she has redone the cover for Morning Glory Milking Farm and made it a little less weird in my opinion. Okay, so those are all the signed books I have. Now let's go through the other books that I've bought. Let's do it. Okay, so I did buy some more manga because I can't help myself. Um, I don't know where the other one is. Oops, hold on, sorry. I bought volume four of Fire in His Fingertips. I'm actually reading this one right now. And then um, I have already read this and I didn't love this one, but I also have the second one. So we'll see. I bought Outbride, Beauty and the Beast. This one is a reverse harem um, reincarnation story kind of thing where these four different beasts need her to um, help repopulate them. So I have one and two in that one. I got the limited cover. They're limited covers, but they're available on Amazon. You can buy these right now. Um, the first three of um, the Naga Bride. So here's Viper. King Cobra. And Blue Coral. Now, I don't have the fourth one because it says that someone was sending me that as a gift. But it said someone sending it to me as a gift for the last month. But these are limited edition. So if that was you, let me know. Um, I didn't ever receive that book. 
There was also that book and Bright Like Wildfire that both said these are gifts to you, but I never received them. So I don't know if Amazon made a mistake um, because I really want it. So I'm going to reorder it. But if you send me that as a gift and you're wondering why I didn't bring it up, it's because it never showed up. So Amazon messed up. So just wanted to let you know that. That's always a weird thing because I don't want to be like, this gift you sent me is not here. But also, if you paid for a gift for me and Amazon didn't send it to me, they fucked up. So just let me know so that I can order it. Um, then I ordered Soft Like Thunder by Jay Wolf. This is the first book in the series, which I didn't completely love this book. Um, but then I read books to three and four which I don't have four yet and I want the complete series and I love these covers so I had to get this one this one is Theo and uh Helen and it just wasn't my favorite it didn't hit the same way these these ones did but I gotta complete my series so this was one of my favorite books of the year so you know we gotta do what we gotta do I picked up The Dark King by Gina Maxwell because um, my a couple of my friends have really loved this. I think it's supposed to be vampire. So grabbed a copy of that. I, of course, had to get Ruined Secrets, book four by Neva Altaj in the Perfectly Imperfect series. This series has been hitting very well for me. Then I actually bought an extra copy of Praise by Sarah Kate because this cover is going to be going out of style. So you know what? I bought an extra one just in case. And I'm planning to do it with the whole series like as they go out of covers just because either I will save that for a friend who doesn't have it or I'll resell it someday and it'll be worth a lot of money. That's how we do it. Then, as I said, I already had a copy ordered of Does It Hurt by H.G. Carlton and I'm not mad about it because I actually like this cover more than the other one. Like, I love it a lot. Um, so I'm not mad. And this one, I actually like the page art on this more than the special edition and there's also let me see if I can find it this is the art for Enzo it has the shark on it and the chapter breaks are little sharks like I'm sorry this is better designed than the special edition one they sent me so I had to have that it's gorgeous then you know I had to buy myself a copy of Flawless because I had a copy of this but it was annotated and raffled off for my patrons and I enjoyed this book so much. It's probably my favorite book I've read for Patreon so far. Loved it. And then one of my favorite books of the year. This is the one I said may challenge. It may challenge the Kennedy Ryan. Okay. This was a six star book for me by Elsie Silver. Single dad, grumpy sunshine, age gap. I mean, the age gap's not the end of the world. Nanny romance, cowboy. It's everything. It's fucking everything, you guys. This, this book is fantastic. And then the last two books that I wanted to show, I'm so happy that I have copies of these and I can't wait for book three in the series to come out. I bought The Grey Tower Chronicles. This book, if you love Outlander, give this a try. This is a fantasy paranormal time travel um, Scottish romance. And this one is a paranormal historical romance. And... It's amazing. So definitely check out these books. I had to get physical copies because of the like old school kind of covers on the front of those. So there we go. For it being a small haul, I still managed to talk a lot. So thank you to everyone who sent me some gifts. Thank you to the PR companies who sent out some amazing books for me to review. I can't wait to read some of them. And yeah, thank you as always for blessing me. It means so much. If you're interested in sending me something for my wish list, or you would like to send me something you've created, or you're an author who'd like me to review a book, I have both my Amazon wish list down below, and I also have um, my PO box down below if you want to send me something. So thank you so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>